So while doing some research for one of my future videos, I stumbled across some PETA articles. And you might know what PETA is, it stands for the People for Ethnical Treatment of Animals. And they're kind of known to not be the best organization. So while they have done some good things towards animals, they tend to have quite a bit of hate and negativity towards people when they do certain things one of which is keeping reptiles. And I came across this one article, there's quite a few negative articles, and my main problem with this is there's simply a lot of false information. And I'm not sure if that's because the author of this was simply too lazy to do actual research, or if they just wanted to make up information to get their opinion across. So the title of this article is Five Reasons Never to Buy a Snake. Now before this, apparently Pete has been known to strike down some videos for different reasons, so I'm going to run a disclaimer, so if they do send a strike, it's a bit easier to dispute. So we can go ahead and start looking at this. First we've got the introduction right here. Basically all it says is uh, the author's neighbor had a snake that got loose, therefore I guess every snake owner is a terrible snake owner. Uh, I guess that's the point that they're trying to get across. But then it says under the story, there are no good reasons to buy a snake, but there are many reasons not to. So clearly, if you are a snake owner or are looking to get a snake, you know that this is completely untrue. So give me the idea that we can work together to make a video. My goal, I think, should be 100 reasons that snakes make great pets. So I need your help to compile this into a video. So in the comments, you can do this now or while I'm talking or just after the video. Uh, compile a list of as many reasons you can think of uh, of why people should consider snakes as pets. So we can go ahead and get into the five reasons. The first one, it says it's a dirty business. So it says breeders sell animals in mass and most reptiles are stolen from their native habitats for a lucrative industry that treats sensitive and fragile animals with little more care than car parts. So it's most certainly true that some of the big reptile breeding facilities are do very poor jobs of caring for their animals and really only care about money not the actual reptiles. So originally I was actually going to do a video on some of these larger businesses, but then I came across some of these articles and switched it to this, so I'm going to put that off for now. But there's one really big problem about their first point, and it's that they just completely generalized every single reptile breeder. So yes, there's a few that do very poorly with their animals and shouldn't be selling or breeding reptiles, but that doesn't mean that good ones don't exist. And I can tell you right now, I'm sure there's at least hundreds of amazing reptile breeders, and three of my animals are from breeders, but there's a difference compared to these that uh, Pete is assuming every single breeder is like. And one, like for example, my leopard gecko, that's not a snake, but he's from BigDaddyGeckos.com, and I got to talk to the breeder when I was picking out the gecko. He helped me, uh, he talked about like what they need, he has this super detailed care sheet, on a site that I still go off of if I have any uh, questions or concerns. And when I did have some concerns with my gecko when he wasn't eating, I was able to message the guy that was breeding them and he helped me out a ton. The same goes for my ball python and my other lizard. I was able to talk to the people that were breeding the animals and I could ask any questions and it was very clear. Uh, I was there long enough that they really cared about the animals and really knew what they were doing. They were all in amazing condition when I purchased them and there's really never been any problems related to the breeder. We've got number two, snakes have specialized needs. Even though dealers looking to make a profit may minimize what reptiles need, snakes require spectrum lighting and precise diet. Uh, it's most certainly true and apparently it's been known that some stores, specifically like Petco and PetSmart, they have had people where they're just like, oh, this animal just needs like some mealworms and a heat lamp. But again, you just basically said that every single dealer really just doesn't care and just wants to get a sale when this is completely untrue. The other thing about this is anyone getting an animal should do research before actually buying it and they should be prepared in advance, which would mean that they've already looked at multiple sources. So if the people at the pet store or wherever they're getting it from tells them one thing, then they already know that that might not be true and they might go back to some more sources and they can question it instead of just assuming that the one person they asked uh, was correct. On top of that, they could have made an article talking about all those specialized needs for different species or directed you to sites that tell you them, but instead their answer to this is just don't buy any snakes. And that doesn't seem right to me. Uh, the second part of this, it says they shun contact with humans and being held, touched, petted, or passed around is stressful and leaves them prone to illness or injury. So I guess what they mean by this is um, stress can be very deadly to reptiles 
and that's most certainly true if you don't know how to handle them. It sounds like the author of this uh, article just really hasn't ever kept any reptiles because it's not hard to properly handle them. And then it says they shun contact with humans, and this is certainly untrue. Some snakes have been known to basically really get along with their owners. Uh, there's some channels on YouTube you can find where the snakes just really seem to get along with their, with their owners, and even my snakes have no problem with me. I guess there's no way to disprove that they shun contact with humans, but if you're around the snakes enough and you get to know your snake well enough and understand really their personality and what they do and don't like, it's very simple to keep them happy. There's another part to this point that says, since snakes don't whine, yelp, flint, or flinch, injuries may go unnoticed or untreated. You really have to be ignoring your animal to not be able to tell when a snake is sick. It's certainly possible that an illness can go unnoticed, but that's for any animal, whether it's a dog or a cat or even a person. And snakes will most certainly flinch too. If they don't like something, they'll try and get away. Like some snakes really don't like being touched on the head, then they're gonna flinch back and they might even hiss. So we've got number three, a killing cycle. Snakes eat rabbits, mice, and crickets. Animals you have to purchase at a pest store further bolstering the industry. And it's generally recommended that you feed your snakes only frozen thawed animals, uh, specifically like mice, rats, and bunnies, because it's more safe on the snake. And snake owners know that feeding frozen is more humane on the rodents because most snake owners are generally animal lovers in general. So this is really just a kind of weird point because certain species of animals have to eat other animals in order to survive is basically part of life. I know humans don't have to eat meat, although we can. So saying someone shouldn't get a certain animal just because it eats other animals doesn't make any sense to me. Even the person that wrote this article, you can see owns a dog. Uh, it even talks about it in the bio. And dogs have to eat meat. If you look at every single dog food, there's going to be something like chicken or turkey or fish or something meat related that's also bolstering those meat product uh, industries. So it's really not something that you can avoid. Number three, we have captivity is cruel. So I really like what they wrote under this one. It says, rather than exploring lush jungles and swamps and experiencing all the sensory pleasures that they are so keenly attuned to, captive snakes are relegated to aquariums in which they can't even stretch out to full length, much less move around or climb. Well, personally, all my animals can stretch out full length in their enclosures. Uh, this isn't necessarily needed, but really, I don't think they exactly enjoy like taking a hike through the woods or something. I'm not really sure what you're trying to get across with this, but you simply just don't know very much about snakes. All, all wild snakes and captive snakes want to do is one, eat, and two, not get eaten. And they can do both of those things when in captivity. If you are out and you see a wild snake and they're not hiding in a den or under somewhere safe, that's because they're either going out to look for food or looking for a mate. And again, Food and mates, if you're breeding, will come to them in the enclosure. So again, this one simply doesn't make very sense and kind of just shows a lack of knowledge for the animal because snakes do not require this and they can be perfectly happy. They won't be sad if they can't go out and roam around for hours. So some snake owners do take their snakes out either to get fresh air or just take them out in their rooms so they can move around. And this is a great thing to do, but it's not required and they're not gonna be sad if they can't do that because really all snakes want to do is hide in their den and stay safe. So number five, we've got sky high mortality. Basically all it says is lots of people will buy a snake and then no longer want it, so they either get rid of it or release it or just neglect it and not care for it or whatever. And this certainly happens and most reptile keepers are aware that some people do this. However, this seems like the most lazy approach possible to fix it and your way of fixing it is just saying, don't buy any snakes, nobody should have snakes. When you're really making people miss out on a great hobby that can be really enjoyable and the snake will be perfectly fine and happy if it's being done correctly. So what you need to do is let people know of what a snake needs and how long they live and how to keep them happy and stuff. And if someone can do these things, there's no reason for them not to get a snake if they really want one. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole article. It's probably one of the most negative articles I've ever read. And again, the part that angers me the most about it is there's simply a lot of incorrect information that they just seem to make up or something, I don't know. But yeah, I just want to let you know of these things and why I personally do not support PETA. I'm sure because they're so well known, I'm sure these get quite a few viewers and it can really affect people and really change the view and opinion of a community like the reptile and amphibian community that I'm lucky enough to be a part of. 
but again, I want you to leave reasons on why snakes can make such great pets so we can compile a really cool video. Maybe we can send it to them or something and show them that this article and many other articles they have shouldn't be on their site. They might not listen, but regardless, it will make a cool video. So that's it for this video. I think this was a bit longer, but I had quite a bit to say about it. But hopefully you enjoyed or got something out of it, and hopefully it wasn't too negative. But that's it. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.